Welcome, everybody, to the Building Aaronsburg podcast. I'm Thomas Aaronsburg. And I'm Catherine Aaronsburg. And today, we're going to talk about our college experiences, because through the magic of podcast algorithm, it sounds like you guys want to hear more about us, specific us. It's yeah, weird, the, uh, but the, we're here for it. <laughs> our two most popular podcasts so far are the Five Love Languages, where we pretty much talked about us, and I guess our kids, too. We talked a lot about the kids. Yeah. And, and then we maybe talked just about- what makes them tick. A yeah, bit. and the other one was our love story. You guys were real interested in that, yeah. which you know it's fine, it's good. So yeah. we're gonna give you more of what you want, people. We're gonna talk about our college stories because Thomas and my college stories could not be more different. No, they could not. So, um, as a lot of you probably know, I went to LSU for a degree in landscape architecture, and um, it was one of those things that I went there because. Um, it was close enough to home to where I knew I could drive home. Like I-10 was two and a half hours. And of course, this is all coming fresh off of me actually going to Baton Rouge this weekend to visit friends. So, um, you know, three hour, two and a half, three hour drive from home, but far enough away to where I didn't feel like I was going to school at home because I right. sure as heck wanted to get out of Mobile for a minute. Right. But also it had to do with your degree. You couldn't have just gone to yeah, the, the alternative, the closest alternative, it was either Auburn or LSU. So Auburn was the one that was in state, and then LSU was the one that was out of state. Well, the right. in state one, um, I felt like everybody was going, everybody from my high school was either going to Alabama or Auburn. There was a few stray kids in our class of about 300 kids who were going out of state or to a different not Alabama State School. And so I didn't want it to be high school all over again. I wanted to be different. This is a reoccurring thing, theme in my life. I want to be a little different. We didn't, you know, we just bought a Cushman, this vintage Cushman that was broken yep. down because Couldn't I didn't have a golf cart. I didn't want a golf cart. Everybody's got a golf cart. I wanted to be different. So we got a broken down Cushman. It's probably not my, you know, like it's not a good quality probably in a lot of ways. <laughs> it's probably like. Um, it probably protects you in a lot of ways. What, doing different than everybody else is yeah. doing just for the sake of not doing what everybody else is yeah. doing? Yeah. It is a very common thing in my life. So anyway, I go off to LSU. I'm getting this degree in landscape architecture. Um, but in the meantime, freshman year, I'm running track. I'm pole vaulting for the LSU track team, which, is, by the way, is hilarious. I was a terrible pole vaulter in high school. You were an SEC athlete. I was, I was an SEC athlete. Let me tell you, the highest quality I got was that I was one of the, the kids who was, like, bringing the GPA up right. on the track team. That was, was really what I was doing. <laughs> that was That's, my purpose, yes. Everybody on the team has a purpose. <laughs> yeah, mine was to bring the GPA up, and so, which is hilarious because I'm not a particularly studious person either. I mean, like, it was just a mess. So, basically, my brother-in-law ran cross-country at LSU, and he still knew people who were coaching there. Like, it's amazing how only, it would have been 20 years ago at this point, it was a small enough deal to where it's like, yeah, I'll take you over to the track. You can meet the coach. Like you can walk onto the track team. Not a big deal. Um, so somehow I like stumbled like from being a, not a good, uh, pole vaulter in high school to becoming a really bad pole (laughs) vaulter in college, but I was on the track team. I don't know how I ended up there. I walked on and I ended up on the track team. So here I am. Well, did they kick people off though? I mean, do you remember anyone coming in? No, but well, like, no, you are not. I don't really know. On the track team. I Could don't, anybody have gone out there, I guess, is what I'm getting I at. have no idea. I don't know if anybody even tried. I mean, I think a lot of people are going, I'm going to a giant... I had. I think a lot of people thought, I'm going to a giant school. LSU is a big deal. Who am I to walk onto a track team? Didn't even think that through. I right. had no... I, I'm from Alabama. I know nothing about LSU. I have no perception on... Or perspective, I guess, on how big a school is, how big of a deal like LSU was at football at the time or like right. athletics, zero. Their track None team of it. too, they had Olympians on their track team at the time. Yes, I ran with like, I knew <laughs> Olympians. I know Lolo Jones, like she doesn't know me, but I sure as heck remember her. We were on the track at the same time. Like yeah. what on earth is happening? No perspective on that whatsoever. <laughs> like didn't know what I was doing. Only in retrospect as a 38 year old person am I like, what was my life like? <laughs> yeah. So, Which is funny because I think if one of our kids tried to do that right now, you'd be like, don't do what that. Are you what doing? are you doing? My parent, no, I don't remember my parents saying one thing about, that's crazy. Why are you doing this? Who do you think you are? Like, But they weren't super like encouraging you got either. This. You're gonna- no, none of it. <laughs> I, I mean, I should probably ask my brother-in-law. He's the one who introduced me to all these people. <laughs> what was he thinking? What was Ben thinking? Anyway, so... <laughs> I was, I won't say I ran track. I was on the track team. Right. <laughs> I took a picture. Did you compete in any meets? Yes. 
and we oh, had to wear wow. the we had to wear the skimpiest outfits. I'm wearing like panties out to run track, which if kicking your legs up over your head. If y'all know me, like I don't wear a bathing suit in front of my family outside of our own personal pool. Like right. St- I, <laughs> I have no words for for how terrible the thought and fear was. I guess was. I just figured if someone's willing to come out here and go through all the running and I everything I didn't else. know what the uniform was until they handed it to me, which was not when we were practicing. I did not know what that uniform was going to look like until... They handed it to you and you're like, where's the rest of it? Like two weeks. Of <laughs> never. you're occur- missing the pants part of it. I don't know if I thought that the pole vultures were something different than the sprinters. I don't know what was happening. I, like, I, even to this day, I'm like, how, like, I must have blacked out. Like, how... How could you how walked did, around in just your underwear? How did I just pre- not pretend to be sick that day that I went out there and didn't jump? Okay, hold a on. Height? So in your meet, what did you jump? I didn't like. I didn't. I jumped up on the mat, and I never made a height. I have extreme stage fright as far, which is hilarious because of what I do. But <laughs> when it comes to athletics or performance, I have a major, major. What do we call it? We performance always, anxiety. Yeah, it's per, yeah, but we always call it um something. Choking. Yeah, I cho- <laughs> <laughs> I'm a choker. <laughs> so even if I had made a height in a practice, meet day was not the way to do it, and it sure as heck not, was not the way to do it when I'm wearing panties in right. front of everybody. When during practice I'm wearing like regular old shorts, regular so, like yeah. you know workout I don't know stuff. workout stuff, whatever. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm like you guys. I'm just now remembering all this in like a. <sighs> Thomas has never heard any of these stories <laughs> I've before. I've not heard any of these stories. <laughs> it was just so what like, was the minimum height? There had to have been a minimum height. Six feet. You didn't get six feet. People can high jump that high. I can. I could, and you Thomas. you cannot pole vault that I'm high. telling you. It was, I have, I'm such a choker. Like, you have no idea. I have probably. <laughs> like, I feel like I need, I should have gone out for track. I think I. My school I know. Off. Like, if anybody had realized how easy it was. I don't know, man. I like. That's like high school. Dude, I jumped higher heights in high school. I jumped higher stuff in a meet in high yeah. school. You know, like I probably jumped eight feet in high school at least, which is still terrible. Right. But, but at the college level in those underwear, I couldn't do it. I'm it was too much pressure. They had such a low minimum height at a college track. Because meet. those days in college, truly, like there were just not as many pole vaulters. It was not as much of a thing. But I mean, we're twenty years ago. Yeah. I mean, there was not that many female pole vaulters for sure. Right. And so, so maybe that was why they let me on. Maybe it was just like. Well, she's got will- no one else. She's, she's willing to jump up on this ridiculous pole in underwear and practice really hard every day. I mean, practice was hard. Yeah. And I stuck to it. I mean, I got, I got like, I work hard, you know? Right. But the underwear was where I drew the line. <laughs> After that, you're like, coach, you're turning it in. All right. Well, let's talk about your classes then. <laughs> you guys, I would have run track all five, four years, whatever, if I had not been in the landscape architecture program. As rigorous as the track program was, the landscape architecture one was way harder. And um, I knew even from freshman year that there was no way that I could do both. Um, I don't recall if someone told me that, like, this is a lot of work. Right. But I do recall there being kids who were in sororities and fraternities. There was very few of them. But the ones who were, I was shocked that they could do both. Because there's all these requirements for hours right. you have to spend at, you know, at uh, events and stuff. All kinds of stuff. Right. And so there was a there was maybe like two kids out of a class of 35 who were in a sorority or a fraternity. I think there was one in each. Mm-hmm. And it was like, what are you like, how are you doing this? So anyway, I gave up track. Fresh after freshman year, I was like, what I mean, I think I had some sort of re- <laughs> realization that, that was not gonna be my priority. Um, and that my school should be the priority. Yeah. And so um quit track. I'm sure my coach was like <laughs> You did well. Good job. <laughs> He left the room and he was probably like, oh, good, thank goodness. I don't know. Thank goodness as, I didn't have to kick I could tell off. you as a coach, when kids like that quit, you're, you kind of, you miss them because they're, you know that they will never, in your case, you would never score in a meet ever. And probably. it was okay. But yeah. you were out there every single day working I was like your the, butt off. I was like the rabbit. You know, on a greyhound track, when there's this rabbit that yeah. goes around and that's what they're supposed to keep up with. I was like that because I would work hard. So I think that I would encourage... The other, You'd work, yeah, the you're other the one that the coach would be. If y'all worked half as hard as Catherine, you would be. <laughs> or if Catherine had any of your ability, she would be jumping <laughs> in the Olympics right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm getting 
better grades than a lot of the athletes that are in, you know, at LSU at that time. And so um, I was bringing the GP. I think I was really there to bring the GPA up of the team. I don't really don't know what that matters to them one way or the other. Anyway, that was where I was. So decided to quit track, continue with landscape architecture. And honestly, I was miserable. Like college for me was miserable and I didn't have enough self, um, Like, I I didn't know enough about myself, and I'm not sure I've even really analyzed it to this day, what my deal was and why I was so unhappy there. It wasn't the school. I had great friends. The friends that I made in landscape architecture are the same friends that I have today. Like, we're so tight, like, tighter than any group of college friends that I know of. And, um... Like I said, I just went and visited with them this weekend. We're going to be at each other's weddings. Like, they were in my wedding. Like, it's, right. we are a very tight group of people. So it wasn't that I didn't have friends. Um, I was just really unhappy when I was there. And I don't. it could have been because I was away from home, and I didn't really know anybody. Um, but five years is a long time to just kind of be, like, sitting in a place that you don't know anybody and just unhappy. Yeah. So all I wanted to do is get the heck out of college, really. Um, I never... I wasn't a go out kid. I had earned a lot of money growing up and being entrepreneurial and like saving money and all this stuff. And I sure as heck was not going to go out and drink it away or doing that yeah. kind of stuff. So all of my weekends were spent in my dorm. I didn't have a car. Um, all the entrepreneurial ideas I thought of when I was, you know, coming along, I sure thought of lots of stuff I could do basically out of my dorm room to make money. Um, I never did any of them. So, I just sat in my room all the time. I mean, it was well, that would probably be why you were so <laughs> didn't have a very pleasant experience because yeah, it was on me for sure. But I just didn't even know what. I mean, what do you do if you don't have a car? Well, most people pick up a hobby, like they would go to the rec center and learn how to play racquetball or something. I did go or... work out, but you know, uh, another thing too is you know I had been an athlete, and when they had us on diets, they yeah. had us on a certain diet, they had us like on this whole like regimen of all kinds of things, and you stop being an athlete. And you're eating regular food again. Right. And man, I gained a ton of weight. Like, I was super muscular. They had us on, like, w- you know, weight plans and all this type mm. stuff. I gained a ton of weight. And I think that was probably probably part of the unhappiness, too. Um, was It was just a weird, weird time. You know, yeah. you're alone. You're fat. You're... <laughs> <laughs> Which is so you funny. You don't do anything. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. Like, it was just bad, bad, bad. Like, definitely a bad time. Um, and eventually, I, like, joined some things. I have a friend, Kathy, that, you know, we went to high school together. And we ended up rooming together. And those, I mean, I kind of came out of it probably around the time we started dating. Yeah. And Kathy was my roommate. What you're saying is I helped pull you out of your deep depression. <sighs> You you probably did. I mean, honestly, which by the way, I need I have a corrections corner, which is totally a, a, my favorite murder cr- um, <laughs> use of that term. But do you remember when we were doing our love story episode? Yeah. And I said we talked about when we knew. I think someone asked that question. When did you know that they were the one or whatever? Yeah. Um. And I said it was when you were playing with your nieces and nephews, or not nephews at the time. It was nieces. Um. I said that was when it, and I, I realized that that was not when it was i think when i realized that i love you loved you was um we went to cooper park which is a park here in mobile yeah. it's on the um on the on mobile the river, river mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, next to the convention center it was freezing outside like yeah. i don't the only reason we were outside is because we had nowhere else to go i think and so we decided to go down to cooper park and sit on a bench which i was like i mean like how cold Sounded do you think like it was? a good idea if it wasn't Next to the water, which makes it even colder. Right. I mean, we say it was freezing in Mobile. It was probably 40 degrees, but... No way. It had to, to have been colder. All I know is my f- hands and toes were freezing. I've got no circulation in my body. And so <laughs> things don't flow out to my extremities. Yeah. And so I remember we like barely started dating. Like, we had just become more than friends probably at that point. And you were like, well, do you want me to warm up your feet? And I was like, what? Why do you want to warm up my feet? And I was like, oh my gosh. It's cold. He's gonna... willing to warm up my feet. Like, that is so Seems nice. like a pretty standard practice for people that have cold feet or hands. Um, do you go around doing that to any, just anybody? Excuse me, would you like for me to warm your feet? No, I mean, you do it to somebody that you really care about. Yeah, I guess. It was just a really nice thing. I think that, like, once I think, thought, had time to think back on it, because when we did the podcast, I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. Right. When I thought about it, that's. That was the moment that I thought of. Like, that that and the kids are the two, like, in my head that, and you know, my memory is bad. But those are the ones that stick out the most as far as what I can imagine to be times where I was like, oh, this guy's so great. 
Okay, so back to the college. Um, so I graduated um, with a degree in landscape architecture. Um, it just felt like, it felt like, oh my gosh, I'm done. Like, get me out of here. I will never go back to school again. School mm-hmm. was always, school was not difficult for me in the way that like, I felt like the information was difficult. Yeah. I just wasn't interested. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was a matter of like me not learning in the way that, they wanted me to learn or whatever, but well, I your just, school is different than the traditional school. You're you had a lot of like projects and stuff. Yeah, but it, even even like sociology or biology, uh, whatever these other classes the other were, electives like, and stuff. You I had to take. never studied for any of those classes ever. Right. Never cracked. I tried to crack open a book. Right. It just if I didn't absorb it in class, I always went to class. I was a good student in that way, but to have to study for, like I could never be a doctor or something like that. Um, where you have to just memorize things and wrote this rote memorization type stuff is not my jam at all. Anyway, I just, I found school to be uh, really miserable, honestly. And I think what made high school enjoyable was just like getting to go to football games and be a cheerleader and like, it was the social part of it. It was the social part of it. Which is, you didn't have that in college. No, not at all. Which Which I don't, I didn't realize that because even now I consider myself to be a pretty, um, extroverted introvert i think is what it's called we're like i'd rather be home right and being in social situations actually is pretty exhausting to me in most cases but i think i do miss but um, you need them you still need i them. do need Even it though they're I exhausting think. you need them yeah every once in a while so i I mean i had five years of lack of socialization for the right. most part and i didn't realize i mean it was a lot like this i shouldn't say it's a lot like this pandemic but with the pandemic, I'm like, I could do this for the rest of my life. I could stay at home and right. like never go anywhere. And then when I go and meet with somebody and like hang out for a while, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I missed just right. like sitting and chatting with somebody. But you don't want to do that every day. No, I don't want to do you it every just day. Need it every once in a while. I need to figure Get out what fix. my balance is because it's definitely not an everyday thing. Right. Um, and I'm bad at I'm bad at hobbies. Like that's just yeah, I turned my hobby into a job and now it's a job, you know? Yeah, um, but, but I mean like some people paint and I've tried all the things. Yeah. Anyway, so I so I graduated from college, went back to Mobile, and then we got married. But I mean, the reason I'm bringing all of this up and think it's um kind of a fun episode is just how different our as much as our childhoods were the same, yeah, or very similar and like how our parents raised us, we were one of many children. Um our college experiences were very 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 different. And since everybody wants to know about what was going on with us, I thought it would be fun. So now you can, oh, we got to go take a break. Sorry. All right. Let's go take a break. When we come back, we'll hear all about Thomas's very, very different college experience. Welcome back to Building Aaronsburg. We are talking about our college experiences. And uh, I told mine. (laughs) <laughs> which includes lots of um, track, believe yep. it or not. I was an athlete, guys. And the athlete out of the both of us is definitely Thomas. And right. he did not yep. play any kind of college sports. But he's well, I didn't go to Division one school. That's why. Oh, <laughs> you only, <laughs> you can only play college sports if you're in Division <laughs> they one. They didn't have them, you know. <laughs> so, Thomas, tell us your story. Right, so, I went, to, I went to Spring Hill College, which is here in Mobile. Um, and how I ended up there was... I didn't know where I wanted to go, and our guidance counselor at the high school I went to found this full-ride scholarship to go to the school. It cost $20,000 a year. Is that what it was that year? Is mm-hmm. that, that long ago, well, 20000 it, it went up very mm-hmm. quickly. Like, over the time I was there, it went up probably $10,000 by the time I graduated. Now, when we say opposite, you know, my graduating, the LSU graduating class of the year that I graduated was like over 10,000 kids. What was your graduating? Maybe, on? maybe 500, 400. Four. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, it was. I think the whole school has had 1,200 kids yeah, in it. I mean, it was about the same size as their high school. Lot. Yeah. That you went to college. Private right. college. I went to a public college. I mean, literally, we had opposite experiences. So I lived at home, and um, a lot of what I did in college was I wasted a lot of time. Uh, college was super, super easy for me. I majored in education. Secondary education, which is super easy. Like, if it wasn't for that, my GPA wouldn't have been as good as it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I majored in mathematics, which is not easy. It's yeah. very hard. Um, but like you, I didn't study for stuff. I just, like, I would go in class, I'd pay attention, 
I would ask a lot of good questions. Do you feel like you then, couldn't study? I had a like could not study. I would look at a page and be like, "This doesn't make." I don't know. No, I could have studied. I I just opted not to, okay. because there would be you know if I knew a test was coming up, I would make sure I got to class thirty minutes early so I could look over my notes. Like I knew how to study. Yeah, I, I just didn't. didn't. I mean, I would go home, and I would play guitar for hours or play video games for hours, or you know my brothers we're all still here in town. My friends were all still here in town. So we would just go do stuff. I mean, the most random things. Which that's exactly what I thought I didn't want in college was to be hanging out with the same people that I hung out with high school. And not and not because I hate I loved high school. Yeah. I just felt like again, I wanted something a little different. Yeah. Just for the sake of but you know, that's, being able to do something I, different. But that's what you were missing in, in college though. I think that's why you were so depressed in college is you didn't have that. And although you probably wouldn't have wanted exactly what I had, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, like, sure. It was, it was some of the most fun times that I've had. I couldn't tell you what I did every day. Yeah. On any particular day. I mean, it was meaningless stuff, but it was with my friends and with my brothers. Yeah. And every day was the same, but it was a new adventure. So you know? beyond the you guys playing video games and having the cool room and all this different stuff that I think we've talked about before in podcasts... Your sister also had a baby. Right. While you so, were in college. My sister had a baby uh, my freshman year of college. And so me and my brother that's a year younger than me, we were the default babysitters. <laughs> and every day, I think I think she would go to a friend of ours um, and the, her mom would watch Lauren in the mornings. Mm-hmm. And then we were normally done. We made sure that we always scheduled our classes from 8 to 12 every day. Like we were done at noon every day. Yeah, smart. Uh, and at 12 o'clock, we would go pick her up, bring her home, watch her as well as a 20 and 19 year old guy could yeah. watch <laughs> a baby. <laughs> lots of bottles being made. Yeah. Lots of teaching her to hold her own bottle. <laughs> that was, yeah. I remember. You know, I, well, I remember even when we started having kids, like what a milestone that is. Like they can hold their own bottle, thank God. Yeah, but I just remember you knew more about babies than I did when we started having babies. Yeah. Because you had experienced a baby way more recently than no, I changing had. Changing lots of diapers. Yeah. I had no idea. Even yeah. to this day, you are the default go to medicine guy for kids, like what they need, what their aches and pains are, and then what, what kind of medicine they need. I have no idea. Yeah. No clue. Part of that was because I didn't take a lot of medicine as a kid. Right. You were over there chomping on vitamin C like it was going out of style. If Thomas did not like the dinner that was being cooked at his house, him and his <laughs> brothers would go upstairs and consume an entire <laughs> bottle of vitamin C. And multivitamins. We had both. Like we had the multivitamins vitamins. and the vitamin C. I have no idea how you're still like alive today. Well, got a strong immune system, I'm sure. Lot, lots of iron consumed. Y'all and had to have been constipated. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I don't think I paid attention to that kind of stuff when I was a kid. You know? Anyway, okay, so you're like raising this baby. <laughs> you, the two dads, yeah. my mean, two dads. I remember. I do remember going to pick her up from Claire's house one morning or midday, or whatever. And like we like waved to the neighbors, like we went into the house, we got the <laughs> got Lauren. She's in her baby carrier. We come out and put her in the car and get in the car. And I don't know if it was me or whoever else. If it was Chris or Pat or whoever. Yeah, there were multiple people they taking were, care of this baby. It wasn't yeah. just you and your brother. It was also a friend, another friend. Like, they probably think we're like a gay couple that just went and got our kid. Whatever. Like, Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and just drove off. <laughs> uh, but we would, I mean, we would watch her every afternoon. Very progressive. <laughs> and then in the evenings, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we weren't division one athletes. We were athletes in our own right. We played. Every kind of intramural sport that existed. He's literally, right now, I'm looking at him. He is wearing his intramural... Uh, oh, wait. I'm sorry. This, this is, is from um, South Alabama, which was... You not the school I went to. Not the school you went to, but you sure darn played on their team. Well, because I took a class, a summer class out there, and so you were allowed to once you get, get a student ID Once you get one student that. ID one time, it lasts for the rest of your life. Pretty this, much, This yeah. guy played one... I mean, took one class and played, like, years of intramural football at South Alabama. And basketball. Oh, my god. And gosh. dodgeball. Every every intramural sport that you could play, oh we played. I never played on an intramural team, And there were every either. iteration of it. I mean, there was regular flag football. There was a co-ed flag football that we played with my sisters, who were also really good athletes. Um, 
there was regular basketball, then there was this thing called short man basketball. You had to be under six feet to play in that league, which... Oh, your entire family was on it. Yeah, I mean... You all made up your own team. Anyway... I mean, we weren't we weren't Division One athletes, but we did spend a Keep lot of our it, time. Keep saying it, buddy. Keep saying it, buddy. There's only one. In, there's time. only one Division One athlete in this room, and it's me. Yep. <laughs> we should put our pictures up. <laughs> Which one in this lineup do you think is a Division One athlete? <laughs> in pole vaulting. <laughs> in pole vaulting. <laughs> so I do remember in college, I did try pole vaulting. I when I was in, in college, high school, you did? yeah. When I was in high school, I wanted to, and Drew Bentley would never. Our track coach would never let me do it. He had his guys that were had been doing it since they were he had some faves yeah and so i never i was a jumper why i was a jumper the event that i got stuck in was triple jump which is made for people that Hilarious. are like six four like you Hilarious. have to have super long legs to do triple jump i'm five six and i don't know why they're just like yeah why don't you go do that the funniest and, track story i've ever heard your brother is shorter than you are yes. the priest he's shorter than you are and he has the most hilarious story about triple jumping alongside right after literally an olympic athlete yes. like yeah there was a guy in mobile it was, it was our first track meet too it, <laughs> and so we we were the first ones to go i guess because it was our home meet so pat went first and i went then they go through the whole lineup and then the very last guy maurice robinson olympian i don't know if he actually jumped in the olympics but he went to the trials and i think he yes. probably made the team as an alternate what high school did he go to blunt okay and so he's up, and everyone knows he's going to set the world on fire with his first jump. Uh -huh. And sure enough, he jumps like 50 feet, which is incredible. It's an incredible <laughs> jump. <laughs> up next, Pat Aaronsberg from McGill Tour. Well, the whole, everyone's still there. Because Maurice just jumped. He's going to jump again. Let's hang out. Now, wait, this clown's going. <laughs> I mean, Didn't he purposely scratch? He purposely scratched. scratched. <laughs> So it looked like, oh, I just didn't get it. I, I could have jumped that far, but <laughs> I didn't do my steps right. I just like that we have a parallel between me on the track with Lolo Jones and him on the track with Maurice Robbins. Like, yeah. we just, oh gosh. It's amazing how parallel our lives have been and then how different all at the same time. Like, just, it's so good. So, it's so good. The, the time I did try to pole vault, though, is one of the guys that did pole vault with us in high school went to South and he was jumping out there. And again, like I told you in the evenings, we were always looking for stuff to do. So he invited us out. To, he was going to teach us how to pole vault. Anyway, we get out there, and Thomas is going to teach us how to jump. And so yeah. he teaches us, like, the basic things. It's me. I, th I know David Highland was there. Pat was supposed to be there, and he got sick, and Chris Agee. Um, so we're, you know, he teaches us how to do it holding on, but, like, not really... Yeah, doing anything the extra. And, yeah. yeah, like just running and holding on and timing everything up. <clears throat> we did that. We're ready to do the next thing. The next thing was like, we're going to do it and like pull our legs up. Mm -hmm. Did that. Like, we're, we're time, like Thomas, we're ready for the next thing. <laughs> He's like, all right. Like, this is all within <laughs> 10 30 minutes. minutes. <laughs> We've gone from, is. I've never even held a pole mm -hmm. to now I'm ready to put my legs over my head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he showed us how to do it. We're like, I think we can do that. Oh my God. So Who? we, okay. this is, now that the bar is at like 9.6 right now. Wait, why do you even set a bar? You've never done this before. Why? Because you have to do, yeah, there's something, oh you got to clear something. I just need to know who landed on their back on the track. Okay, so no one, after I went and almost died, everyone else like, we're done. Thanks. Here's your Thanks pole for back. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go now. <laughs> so we had done like eight, eight and a half, nine. He moves up to 9.6. So now like we have to kick our legs up over our head. Right. Well. So I go first, and when I do that, my legs do go over my head, but then they don't come back. Mm, mm -hmm. So I fall like head first mm -hmm. into the mat, and I think my ear hit my shoulder. I mean, that's how yeah. jacked up I landed. And I think everyone saw that. We're like, all right, we're done. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Thomas might be injured, <laughs> but we're leaving. Like I like rolled off the mat like, oh, I think I hurt my shoulder. <laughs> He's like, no, you're good. Just uh, we'll see you guys later. Yeah. I don't you have insurance here. for this. Yeah. You were exactly. here. Yeah, pole vaulting is a very dangerous sport. If you don't know what you're doing, you can if you oh, don't yes. if you don't get the momentum of your body, if you can imagine a pole vaulter sticking the pole into the box and jump up on the pole and if you don't make the momentum to go all the way forward onto right. the mat, you're going to fall back. Well, and onto there's so the much track. technique and that kind of technique you have to build the muscle memory for to right. do it right, which we couldn't possibly have done in the 30, 30 minutes, minutes that we were yeah. out there. 
And we didn't. I'm sure we didn't warm up. There was no like, let's run around the track and well, do some you were like skips. 19 years old, so you yeah, think... it's like here's the pole. Let's get going. He yeah. was already out there. He was probably already warm and doing his workout. I forgot to tell you yesterday when I was driving back from Baton Rouge, there was this little tiny car that had a bag of poles on the top on the mm-hmm. roof, and I was like, oh my gosh, they're coming back from a meet or something. They got poles on their top of their you know their pole vaulters. Yeah, and Addie's like. How do you know? Because you know? like, that's a bag of poles. Yeah. I can I can see what it is. I, I know, know that the brain. <laughs> so right before I finished college, I started teaching. I would say probably I think sophomore year I declared my major as uh, a teacher because I was coaching. Oh, you football. started your you started your major as a teacher. My sophomore year. Okay. Yeah. You said I started teaching. I thought you were going to. No. Yeah, well, I teaching. so we have to student teach. Uh, the very last semester, you student teach. So I was student teaching at St. Paul's. Um, and then the lady that I was student teaching with got pregnant, and so she needed someone to kind of take over while oh, she yeah. was out on maternity leave. Yeah, I remember so that. That was my first job, was, uh, for like a month and a half, I was working there as a, kind of a substitute, long-term substitute, until I got my first real job. We're gonna have to do a, um, a podcast on our first jobs. Ooh, I could go on I, for oh, days. I could go on for days on my first job. Oh, I loved that job. Oh, my God. But Again, for another opposite. for another day. So, for in, another so day. in the end, you know, we we both came from similar backgrounds, had very similar high school stories, very different college stories, right. and then still got married and are working it out. And what I love about that is that we're both able since everything was so the same, our college experiences allow us to come at a lot of things from different. I mean, as similar as we are, we've come at a lot of things from different perspectives, and that's enabled us to like. If you had not helped raise your niece. When we started having kids, we would right. have been clueless. And I'm just now realizing we were so relaxed when we had kids. When we yeah. first having kids, I wasn't we were, worried about it. We were never worried about it. And I think maybe you being relaxed made me relaxed because I didn't ever worry about it. Right. And then our kid wasn't, you know, they, they were fine. Um, and so I think just having the different experiences helped us feed off of each feed off of each other but then be able to take care of things that if we had continued with our similar path as we had our entire lives it wouldn't have worked out as well possibly as it did yeah and i'll say this too the experiences that you're going through you don't realize um how formative they can be you know i I would have never imagined that helping raise my niece for the first couple years while you know my sister was still trying to do school and work and everything else um would have been such a you probably st- important piece. You probably of, didn't realize it until like right now, maybe. I don't know. Um, I think I probably noticed it when when we had kids. Like I knew how to change diapers and I knew what to do with their dirty diaper. But and, did you ever think back? Oh, this is because I re- I did this before. Um, because I think you just take it for granted. No, I yeah, I probably it. did. I probably did. You just do it. I like how to feed a baby a bottle and heat it up and, and but all my, that, like, from my perspective not only did you know how to do it but you had no issue doing it which is huge especially right. i mean 12 years ago still men i mean our generation of husbands my generation of husbands are a lot more helpful with the you know less stereotypical you know male men roles roles yeah. yeah um but you never like i never had to ask you to change a diaper or like or i mean i'm sure i did but it wasn't like well, I don't do that or any of that. Like right. you just did it. You know, yeah. there was no, neither one of us ever like questioned it or whatever. And it was because you'd done it before. And I never thought of that till just now. Yeah. I thought that was just you because you're nice and you love me and you love our kids. But it was also because you had done it before. And it was yeah, just like, it was yeah, just okay. not even a thing. Yeah. Didn't think about it. Yeah. And I remember you telling me like at some point, oh, she's going to learn, like she's, she can start holding the bottle up for herself. Like there was just little, now that I'm thinking I re- so, back. I mean, there was for just those of you that things. don't have kids. This is an important thing. Every time that you, like if your kid's drinking a bottle, as you're feeding them the bottle, you should take their hands. And like, <laughs> I remember always doing that with her. Like I would be sitting there holding her mm-hmm. and I would always put her hands on the bottle. Yeah. So they could get used to it. And then like you slowly take your own pressure <laughs> off of it. So that they eventually learn. Like, that oh, is such a metaphor for how we raise our kids in general. <laughs> like we're constantly... Having them do stuff and then backing away so that they can do it themselves. Yeah. Or it should be that way anyway. Where you're trying to teach them a skill. Um, and when you start, you're doing it yourself. And then you back away and back away until they're doing it themselves. Right. I like that. I think that's yeah. a good... That's, I guess maybe that's the teacher in me too. Like it just yeah, naturally... Yeah, you're a natural I'd teacher. Yeah. Wanted them to learn that for themselves. Yeah. You know, maybe some there was some selfish 
reasons behind it. I don't want to hold it. I want yeah, to let me prop you up with a pillow. Play my video <laughs> game and you're killing me. My, <laughs> can I play this thing one handed? <laughs> let me prop you up on a pillow so you can hold your own bottle. But like I never would have thought to do that, you yeah. know. And so you already knew it. So definitely was an advantage in that area. Yep. All right. So that's our conversation on our college experiences. If you guys have any questions, you can always email us at buildingarensburg.com. You can message us on Facebook at buildingarensburg.com and also on Instagram at buildingarensburg.com. Thomas is really getting into some Instagram right now. You, oh, guys, yeah. you guys can hear more of his I'm, voice. I'm getting to be a pro, <laughs> I would say. It's good stuff. All right. We'll see y'all next time. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Here are my undies. <laughs> I still Peace. have my undies. <laughs> He's <what>? out. <laughs> I still have my undies. I still have oh my my Lord. Can you even imagine? I can see how them horrible. like giving you your uniform, like, all right, thanks, coach. Then like I'm that like, morning you like put it on, you're like, where's the shorts? <laughs>